Well, again, it's Wing Nation presented by Sage Fruit. Talking sprint car racing, our favorite time of the week, and we are so glad that you have joined us. Ashley Strummy and Steve Post, we're going to talk to James McFadden. Well, Later you're going to talk yes, to James Yes, well, I know. McFadden. I know. We're gonna, we're, I'm going to talk to James McFadden. <laughs> Ashley's going to survive a conversation because there is something with the Australian accent and Ashley that gets her all giddy. So uh, James is going to get Ashley giddy, and we're going to have a nice conversation, <laughs> right. and I look forward to it. So we are glad you're spending some time with us here. Uh, the World Racing Group has called this weekend we're in, which is formally known as the World Finals, mm-hmm. and next year will be known as the World Finals. Last call. Now, Ashley, you've been out with friends. I've been out with friends. There are sometimes last call can't get here fast enough. And then there's other times like, how what? How did we get here? Where are you at with 2020 in a last call? Oh, man. You know, I don't know. I guess uh, you don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. (laughs) (laughs) I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Obviously, I think we're all ready for 2020 to be over, but maybe not in the the racing sense of things. So. The racing has been so good this year, but oh my gosh, I so, I may actually celebrate New Year's Eve for the first time (laughs) ever. You know, I mean, I just, I just don't know. This has been so weird, but it is what it is. We're we're November, last call. Yeah. And we were all worried back in March that we were never going to have life again. And here we are. Perspective. Right? Here we are in October, November, November, November. I don't even know what month it is. Perspective. In April, we didn't know we were going to get the next call. Right. Let alone the last (laughs) last call. call, So, yeah, absolutely cool stuff. That is for sure. Speaking of which, the California 360 sprints. Marysville Speedway, the Paul Howes Memorial. Paul is a former promoter out there at Marysville Speedway. Nick Larson was the leader, but Andy Forsberg, the 2020 champion, was stalking him, looking for his fourth win of the season. Troy Hennig with the call on Flow Racing. And now for the Dry Dean Death-Defying Move of the Week, where one driver simply amazes us with their on-track moves. Forsberg back to the inside. Larson sees him, and Andy Forsberg takes the lead. Mr. Excitement. That death-defying move was brought to you by Dry Dean Diesel All Death the official deaf of the world of outlaws and wheelmen everywhere. Visit drydean.com for more information. Pride. Passion. Performance. We are. We are. We are Team Dryden. Welcome back. It is Wing Nation presented by Sage Fruit. Talking sprint car racing. Let's go to the Hercules Tire Hotline. Joining us from KKR in Mooresville, North Carolina, James McFadden joins us via Skype. Hello, James. Welcome into Wing Nation. Thanks. Thanks for having me, guys. It is great to catch up with you. Last week, actually, KKR, they had a flea market for a lot of the local teams and had the chance to catch up with you, James, there. And one of the things that really strikes me is that you have found a North American family there at KKR. That is, you really have fit in with these guys well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, You know, I come over here for a long time. So to have, you know, basically a a family on the other side of the world makes makes it a lot easier to spend basically the whole time together. So, uh, yeah, there's just an enjoyable bunch of guys um, and girls, and it's just a uh, privilege to be a part of the team. You know, they, they treat me as one of their own. No doubt. You've, this, what you've done with this nine car and, and kind of the situation, how it's fallen, has been extremely impressive in the quick time that it's kind of all turned around in these last, what, two years yep. now. What has it been like, obviously, just – the quick success that you guys had to continuing building into what you guys are building now, how has that worked and how influential has Casey been in making sure you have everything you need? Yeah, it's uh, funny, obviously, how it all turned out um, has been pretty cool, but unfortunate situation for me to get into the car. But for me, it's been a bit of a, you know, a rejuvenation in, in my career in America. I was at the stage where I probably wasn't going to come over very often and, you know, being away from home so much, it was just, it was just tough. But then, yeah, to get the opportunity to be in the nine car, which is obviously an outlaw championship winning car and, and team. So to get that opportunity was huge. And then, uh, 
you know, to go well was even better, which made it easier. And then, and then, like we said before, to build a, a family and a friendship with these guys has has been great. So, go going to the racetrack is fun for me. It's you know, it's it's my job. But first and foremost, I'm a sprint car fan that just loves to do it. So, I get to live the dream and hang out with a bunch of good dudes at the same time. You know, Casey does have a championship caliber World of Outlaw team. In fact, your teammate, Brad Sweet, and, and you've had a chance to race with Brad, and I've seen you guys on the podium a lot. Are there are there similarities that you and Brad like in a car? Are there differences? And how have you guys come to 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 to, to meld that all together into a, into a strong two-car team? Yeah, Brad and I have a good relationship. We've had one for a long time. I think I wasn't racing when he first came to Australia. I'd still... It was about a year or so out of the car and I met him there and hung out a bit. And so him coming to Australia all the time, we've, we've you know, become friends. And then obviously uh, transitioning to the nine car, we've, we've also become even closer, closer as a teammates and then uh, help each other, you know, with whatever it needs, whether, you know, it's me needing advice to get around a track or, or him, you know, bouncing ideas with cars, setups or driving wise and, I think, you know, not just Brad and myself, but the teams really get along really well. And I think that's the dynamics of the, the whole operation here is, is really cool right now. We always talk about how meshing is so important yeah. with teams, and that's incredible that you guys have a great relationship that easily. James, coming over here to the States and, and racing, now that you're getting to see these tracks for more than once or twice, is there a track that you really enjoy going, here, going to here in the States? Uh, probably Peavely still one of my favourites. We just haven't been there a whole lot, uh, obviously, with the 360 Nationals and stuff. But like I said, I just enjoyed racing sprint cars. So I'm always a quarter-mile guy at heart, always will be. I love the elbows up, sort of pound the cushion and fence. But these guys have sort of started to teach me how to run the bottom and the middle and have a little more, more patience. So I just enjoy racing all tracks. It's uh, half-miles definitely a, are a tougher thing for me mentally um, and driving wise. So I'm enjoying the challenge of that. Um, but yeah, I don't really have a favorite at all. James, one of the things that really struck me about our visit last week is that you are such a student of the sport and talk about different driving styles and what's working now and what's not working now. How do you, I mean, you drive a car, but, but do you, do you, do you watch a lot of video? Do you, do you, how, how do you be a student of the sport and, and try to stay up with what, what is the 2020 thing you need to do? Yeah, it's, uh, it's tough. Um, like I said, I think, you know, Donnie Schatz, um, he set a benchmark and then Brad, you know, sort of stepped that up, up, up again and, and was able to do, you know, what Donnie does through the middle and on the bottom and be super impressive down there, but still be able to pound the cushion when he has to. And then obviously, you know, guys like Larson and Sheldon this year have stepped it up again and and uh, can, you know, just go out and pound a cushion and, and look like, you know, they're, they're in, a, in a bit of trouble sometimes and pull it out and, you know, do 30 laps that way. So I think it's really cool the progression that the sport goes in. Um, every few years, someone new comes in there and, and changes the way we have to do it. So, yeah, I just try and watch as much as I can, try and listen to Brad as much as I can listen to other people's interviews and, you know, maybe pick things up that I could feel in a car at the time and then another guy feels the same way and watch, you know, how he drives it. So you're always learning. Um, I've been doing this a long time now and every time I jump in the car, I learn something different. So, like I said, it, it's cool to have guys like Justin and Casey and, and Brad and Eric and, and that in your corner to be able to bounce a lot of different ideas off of. James, real quick, you talk about obviously the team and, and how well you guys are meshing, but is there anyone back in Australia that you still rely on for information that's maybe watching the races as well? Yeah, my dad, um, he uh, obviously knows my driving style better than anybody else. And if I'm struggling, he'll always just send me a little message like, oh, why don't you check what's going on with your right rear when you watch the video or something like that. So yeah, I'll always bounce off ideas off my old man and, and also my crew chief back home in, in Kim Boswell. So, yeah, we just, I think this, this sport, it's, uh, it's so hard to get a good judge of what's happening because there's so many different people with opinions on how to do it. So it's always good just to bounce ideas off people and, and learn something new every time. Fascinating stuff. Father knows best, that's for sure. James, <laughs> hang in there with us. Everyone else, stick around. More with James McFadden in just a moment. 
Hey, Ashley, what are you up to? Oh, I just stopped by to grab some sage fruit apples. Now I just have to decide which ones. You can never go wrong with a Honeycrisp. They're light, crisp, and full of perfectly balanced flavor. Oh, hey. You could always go with one of their classics, the Gala or Fuji. They're both sweet and juicy. Grown in the heart of Eastern Washington, Sage Fruit Company works hard on the farm and with their retail partners to provide high quality apples and pears to consumers all year long. Well, I couldn't decide which ones. Thanks for the help, guys. I'll race you to check out. Welcome back. It is Wing Nation presented by Sage Fruit. We are joined on the Hercules Tire Hotline or Hercules Tire Skype line, if you will, by James McFadden, driver for KKR. James, earlier this year, I had, we had Brad Sweet on the program, and we know Brad loves to cook, okay? You and I chatted last week, and you indicated that you like to cook. Okay, here's the situation. Same question I asked Brad. You're going to have the guys over at the shop. Brad's going to come over. Or what are you going to prepare? What's your go-to meal as a cook? It's tough because Americans have a different taste buds than what Australians do. So uh, I like to cook curries, Thai, like the coconut, you know, pineapple sort of curries and I actually cooked Brad one the other day and he said it was pretty good. So I must have done something right. But yeah, I, you know, Brad cooks meat and smoker and I cook more delicate dishes, I'd say. <laughs> yeah. You, you had talked about that meat in Australia versus meat in America is quite the different topic, really. Absolutely. Um, obviously, we've got so much more land with no population. So the cows just cruise around the paddocks and eat whatever they want to eat and you get what you're given basically on the plate. So, uh, yeah, it's just a different taste. Same with everything, really. It all just—it's the same food. It just tastes different. So, I uh, yeah, I definitely miss Australian food when I'm over here for sure. I'm just curious: is there a signature cocktail, or ah. you know, is there a drink that you go with with your Australian dishes? Oh, you just can't beat a standard cut and draft beer, to be honest with you. <laughs> James, you have had such an interesting season because you came over from Volusia, or came over for Volusia, you went back home, and then. The COVID, the COVID virus hit. What has it been like getting moved back over here, not getting to move back over here when you wanted to? Just talk a little bit about that struggle of flying back and forth or trying to fly back and forth these days. Yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely a different world. Um, you know, I was sort of signed on with KKR thinking it was going to be my biggest year that I've had racing-wise um, in America with, with how many shows we were going to do and excited for it. And then obviously unfortunately COVID hit and, and messed a lot of plans up for everybody, not just myself. So it uh mentally it was pretty tough, mate, to be honest. We um sort of got locked down quite a lot there at home and, and had to sit sit at home and, and it just prolonged my visa um applications and all that sort of stuff from basically being a month, you know, month, two months process to six or seven months process. So um even little things like going to the uh, u.s consulate to get my passport stamped ended up being a month instead of just driving three hours and going to get it stamped so it just was a, a super hard um deal then i had to get permission from the australian government to to leave the country um basically they won't leave, let australian citizens leave unless you've got a you know exemption or a, or a reason to do it um so you had to prove why i need to do, do that and and um have a basically a job over here so yeah that was that was tough and then i uh, got to melbourne airport and that was shut so i basically couldn't fly an hour to go to sydney to jump on a plane to go to la or dallas i had to fly from melbourne to doha which is in Qatar, which is middle east um so 19 hours the wrong way on an airplane to an airport that was basically shut there was about 50 people in it when we got there um, and then back on a plane from there to, to Dallas, which is another 15, 16 hours. And, uh, yeah, it was, it was strange. We, we were on the plane with, you know, the masks and the face shield and, and all the, um, all the hostess and that they had, uh, PPE gear on, like they were in full, basically looked like they're in hazmat suits. So went from that to rolling up to Dallas where it was wide open. So it was a pretty big, uh, pretty big eye opening experience. Um, something that. It was strange. Like I, I fly out of Melbourne Airport all the time. It's a big international airport, and everything was basically shut. And you had to produce all your documents before you even even walked into the airport. So it was a it was a tough deal, mate. We um at one stage I actually thought I wasn't going to be able to get here at all. So to be able to get here was was really cool. And then obviously the travel home is going to be 
I don't really know what to expect, but I know when I do get home, I have to quarantine for 14 days in a hotel. So that's going to suck. <laughs> wow. That is unreal. I, I didn't realize you had to go through that entire process. I mean, I knew about the visa and what that took, but all the extra stuff you threw in there, I never even fathomed. So while you guys were over there and we all were dealing with the coronavirus in lockdown, what were you doing in, with your free time, I guess? Uh, it kind of was, it was uh, really sort of boring there um, at the start. And then I was able to actually leave the house for a little bit. And I, I own a uh, engine building business as well that I do on the side. And I built a few sprint car motors in between that and um, just to kind of keep me busy. And then, yeah, watched a lot of Dirt Vision, which was sort of sucked because Casey was driving the car with my name on it. So I was like, man, get out of my car. I, I want to be in that. But yeah, we did that and um, bought a smoker. So I was trying to beat Brad at smoking meat and then uh, probably drank a little bit too much as well and tried to work on my fitness a little bit, being out of the car and, and stuff like that. But yeah, just it was tough. Honestly, it was really tough. It was something mentally you probably weren't prepared for, obviously, because we were, we were coming over here to race and, and have, a, have a big go at it. And instead, we're stuck at home, which isn't a bad thing, but uh, it's just not what we're expecting to do. That 14 day quarantine you have coming up in the hotel, that doesn't sound fun at all. So, um, James, we appreciate the time. We, uh, we wish you the best this week in last call at Charlotte and then ultimately getting back home to Australia and uh, with your season down there. But thanks again for joining us and uh, appreciate the time. Oh, good. Thanks for having me, guys. Appreciate it. There we go. James McFadden. KKR, the Caravan number nine car, joining us here on the program. Stay with us. Our Tweet Your Seats are coming up next, as well as a lap around the sprint car world. Power isn't born. It's built over time. For over 65 years, Hercules Tires has been providing the muscle to move more drivers. Whatever the vehicle, whatever the terrain, and we back it with a powerful protection plan. So wherever the road or the trail takes you, we have the selection, value, and strength to get you there. Hercules Tires. Ride on our strength. Watching Wing Nation presented by Sage Fruit, and it is time for the Tweet Your Seat Tweet of the Week. And we are going to honor every the same people at Halloween every single year. The Pittmans, Mandy Pittman tweeted in, they are Mario Kart, a banana, and a princess, and Mario and Yoshi. Last year, all I remember is Mandy giggling because Darren was Mr. Potato Head and couldn't walk in his suits. And they're always so much fun at a Halloween. And I must shout out to Zan and Sheldon Hodenshield as well. They were Aladdin. Oh, and okay. And she was Jasmine, and he was on his one wheel as a nice. magic carpet. Nice. But yes. <laughs> well, I've learned the Pittmans win Halloween most times, True. that's for sure. But we love this one from Kevin and this one from Clay. Uh, Kevin, his son Heath, put a Danny Dietrich carve in the pumpkin. And uh, his son, uh, Clay's son, or Kyle Larson's in his pumpkin that as well. So neat, neat stuff. Love celebrating uh, Halloween season as well. Let's take a lap around the sprint car world. As we roll into turn number one, let's talk about Bill Baylog, the North Pole nightmare. The IRA bumper-to-bumper champion had 12 wins this season, his 10th series champion. But Ashley, late this season, he teamed up with Mark Cauldron, who's a guy you're very familiar with and has a huge passion for the sport. Oh, he absolutely does. Uh, him and my dad used to race together back in the day, and so Mark's a good friend of ours. And uh, fingers crossed you might see that combo next year, maybe. I'm um, really? not dropping any hints by any means. I'm not in their business decisions, but I know that there's a, a, a passion that they both would like to share. Nice, <laughs> nice. Rolling off into turn number two now, let's talk about Houston Speedway. The big story, one of the yes. big stories in 2020 was that Houston was back. Todd Coring bought the track in August. They had an all-star show. September, a World of Outlaw show in Ashley. Houston's boy, the, the 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 world just blew up. It with sure did, and people are still talking about it. It's that incredible. They can't wait to get back there again. And knowing that Todd's at the wheel, we know that good things are going to happen. You think, yeah, good things are going to happen. Listen to this: the showdown. Okay, it starts Sunday, June twentieth, with a four ten show at Houston's. Monday and Tuesday, the Houston's fifty for the World of Outlaws. Wednesday is a hauler parade and celebration at Jackson. Thursday through Saturday, the 43rd annual Agco Jackson Nationals. They're just across the state border from each other. The tracks are 
more than $500,000 on the line. They're doing it right, aren't they? They up there? really are. Absolutely. Like, again, Dodd's in charge. Yes. Where everybody's yes. in good hands. So if you're marking your calendar, <laughs> June 20th, yes. Husets Jackson combo platter. You are going to win. All right. Down the back stretch into turn number three, where we find some big sprint car news from Central Pennsylvania. The premier racing team, Jerry Parrish, the owner, and Brian Monteith split after 17 years. Actually, this team had so much success as well. They did, but all good things have to come to an end. Whether it's mutual or not, you know, it's racing. It happens, and, you know, I'm sure Brian will find himself in a seat because he. I don't think he's ready to hang that helmet up just the yet. edge, that's for <laughs> sure. Eight championships at Lincoln Speedway, more than 60 wins, 25 wins at Williams Grove, and a five-time Pennsylvania Speed Week champion where one driver leaves, a young driver gets an opportunity. Young Matt Campbell, a 22-year-old racer, He's come up from the go-karts to the 358s with a family team into the 410. Boy, what an opportunity for this young guy. Absolutely, and it'll be exciting to see what happens yes. this year. As he's growing and continuing to learn, it's going to be a good seat for him to fill. Really is, that's for sure. Jerry Parrish, one of the great owners up in Pennsylvania. Finally, off turn number four, the Steve King Foundation. Now, this is a great organization. Steve King was a, was a racer. Okay, and he um, had a crash in 2006 at the Knoxville Nationals that took his life. Out of that tragedy came the Steve King Foundation. They assist racers who are seriously ill, severely injured, or killed, and they are doing an I'd Rather Be at the Track 5K virtual race. I did mine. There's pictures of it. I did mine on Saturday, and uh, it's fun to uh, it's fun to have things you care about in a great organization like the Steve King Foundation. Yeah, and they give, you know, how they give back to the sport and those that need help for being injured along the way. It's just incredible what they do for the sport. Really, truly is. Register now. You can walk, run, bike, hike, or swim before December 31st. You can do all of that at www.stevekingfoundation.org. And there is a lap around the sprint car world. You know, Ford's racing roots extend all the way back to 1901 when Henry Ford won his first and only race. And last October, when Donnie Schatz brought a Ford Power World of Outlaws sprint car across the finish line, another win was added to the Ford Trophy case. He continued a few weeks ago with his National Open win at Williams Grove, and for anyone who loves sprint car racing, those were the banner days. It became clear the Blue Oval was back on the dirt tracks and in a big way. No doubt Ford is more committed than ever to providing grassroots racing with a contemporary power it craves. Stay with us, more Wing Nation in just a moment. Hey Ashley, what are you up to? Oh, I just stopped by to grab some sage fruit apples. Now I just have to decide which ones. You can never go wrong with a Honeycrisp. They're light, crisp, and full of perfectly balanced flavor. Oh, hey. You could always go with one of their classics, the Gala or Fuji. They're both sweet and juicy. Grown in the heart of Eastern Washington, Sage Fruit Company works hard on the farm and with their retail partners to provide high quality apples and pears to consumers all year long. Well, I couldn't decide which ones. Thanks for the help, guys. I'll race you to the checkout. There are people who say things aren't made here anymore. Those people should make a trip to Michigan or Kentucky or Illinois, where you'll find our workers and dealers and engineers and technicians building for America. We're proud to employ more hourly workers than any other automaker in this country because we build for this country. It is Wing Nation presented by Sage Fruit. We are so glad you're spending time with us. Love chatting with James McFadden. Yes, I love his Australian accent. Well, you did really, really good <laughs> containing yourself. Thank yes. you. It took a lot. Yeah. When he drops those mates, I'm telling you, there's just something that makes my heart butter. Like I said, like I said uh, <laughs> last week up there at KKR at that flea market, we stood there over hoist, having beer, and just talking. And I'm just like, what a cool guy. One of those guys that's rather quiet, so you don't yes. get to know him at the racetrack. Mm -hmm. When I'm like, we've got to get him on the show. We got to talk about cooking, the important right. stuff. <laughs> yes. That's for sure. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> and then that racing stuff, oh, Joe, and the visa stuff. That, and all was, of that. that was fascinating. That was Unreal. Pretty cool. Do you yeah. think about that? Quarantine. I can just imagine going to your government going, I'd like to go to the United States to race cars. Yeah, I'm driving for Casey Kane. <laughs> you know him? Is that, yeah, you ever heard of him? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Fun stuff. Great talking to James McFadden. Uh, next week, we're going to have the World of Outlaw Champion here on the show. So that is going to be awesome. So appreciate James joining us this week. More important than all of that, though, thank you for joining us here on Wing Nation. <laughs>